My name is Aaron Bernstein. Today is Tuesday, October 12th, 2004. Your name, please? Miriam Mirangai. And I'm her daughter, Judy Catton. Okay, and we are here for the Oral History Project, doing a mother-daughter interview. And Ms. Mirangai, you, you had started t telling me before um, that there are certain things that you sure. wanted to let us know, so please go ahead and all I'll right. just jump in and interrupt All you right, good. I have some extra questions. All right. I was born in Milwaukee, March 12, 1916. What hospital? St. Joseph's, but not the new St. Joseph's, the one on 4th and Walnut? 5th and Walnut, okay. I have two children, Judy Miringoff Ketton, lives in Milwaukee, and I have a son, James Miringoff, lives in Carlsbad, California. Are you ready? My father's name was Louis Chutko, C-H-U-T-K-O-W. And what did he do? And he was in the insurance business, Metropolitan. And his wife's name was Anna Fox Chutko. No brothers. A sister, Dr. April Levine's wife, Sylvia C. Levine. Yeah, All right. no, but let's tell them a little bit about about their life because right. my grandparents came from Russia. Yeah, just third. All okay. right. And they settled in Plymouth, Wisconsin. Where did they come from in Russia? No. That's we don't know. She doesn't know that. I part. don't okay. know that. My father came from Platts. But Jay so would know. Jay Larkey would know. All right. Well, at any rate, they settled in Plymouth. Okay. Very few Jewish people in Plymouth. And um, <laughs> uh, the, the grandmother. My mother's mother died very young, and the father remarried, so my mother, <coughs> the oldest sister, raised her brother and her sister. One was, can I tell you who they are? Please. All right. One was Dr. Max Fox, and one was Esther Larkey. And she raised them in Plymouth. Then they moved to Milwaukee. And she had a, my sister was born, my sister was 12 years older than I was, so she must have been born in 1904. But you know what, we missed an important part though. What right. happened was when the mother died very early, the oldest child did raise the kids, but there wasn't enough money, so several of the kids were sent out to other relatives to live, to live with them. Oh. Some of the wealthier so-called um, families who had more money for food, etc raised them. Um, Dr. Fox was the youngest. Uh, it was very important to him to go to medical school because um, at one point when the mother had been ill before she passed away, they didn't have enough money in the home and the doctor wouldn't come and they owed bills and whatever. And he eventually went on to be um, a very well-known physician in Milwaukee. He was head of contagious diseases in Muirdale and worked with Jonas Salk, etc. So all, in George of all these children did very well. And um, it's very interesting to note that that's what people did in those days. They got married very young to raise the rest of the children, and the kids that they couldn't afford, the rest of the relatives pitched in. What, yeah, what the child that? that died in Plymouth, uh -huh. I'll never forget this story, this I've got to tell. Okay. Uh, they were so poor and the doctor wouldn't make a house call because he owed, they owed them. And my uncle, Dr. Fox, said, I'm going to be a doctor someday and I'm going to treat everybody, and he did. He was a humanitarian doctor, is that right? right. Yeah. That's wonderful. Right. What, what drew your family to Plymouth initially, coming from the old country? Well, the relatives were in the fur and the hide business, and I don't know what they did, Judy. Well, they owned the, they owned the store, remember? Oh, the yeah, store they owned a the store. What kind of store? Uh, was this a, a dry goods a, a or laundry? Call it. La yeah. We have one. We have a shirt. picture, it's here. Okay. And we have a picture, and it says, you know, shirts. Eight clothing. cents shirts. Yeah. Do you have the name of the store so we can, uh, no. when we see the picture, don't we know. can... You, the picture's here. Is it but identified, do you know? No. no. I, I don't know. We can identify the people and the, the woman that works on there and the grandmother. And then the father, why she raised them all, the mother died. There's a picture of the grandmother on that picture, right? Right. right. And she raised the two, but the rest of them went to relatives here in town by the name of Feld, F-E-L-D. Okay. Is that right? Right. And then her father, talk about Poppy, they actually, their entire family came from, the, from Russia. 
And we have one just amazing picture that was taken uh, at the end of the 1800s, and it was one of the featured pictures oh, yeah. in the exhibit at the Milwaukee okay. Museum. And it shows the entire family. And my grandfather was 12 in that picture. And he was born in about 1882. 82. Okay, and he was 12 in that picture. So, um, and it was particularly fascinating because my mother loved it because that picture was blown up quite large in the Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee Museum exhibit. Um, in it, you'll see the grandmother and the grandfather looking quite old sitting in the middle and all the children around and, them. And one of the daughters there is, is, their name is Scribner. That's the name in Milwaukee, Scribner Cohen. Mm -hmm. And that was one daughter. And the other brothers, one was from Florida, one was from Chicago. And, and most of them stayed in Milwaukee, but there their was name one was person in the picture who did not stay in Milwaukee, one of the brothers. And he's the only one who was already clean shaven. Interesting. That was very interesting. And that then, was something that I noticed. Uh, and then, uh, see, now wait, there's something else. Um, the, then the Kermans come in, K-U-R-M-A-N. Um, and Phil was eventually, my, yeah, yeah. he was eventually my, 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 my father's sister was Mrs. Kerman. Okay. Phil Kerman was head of Sinai, Sinai Hospital. Hospital. It was yeah. called Mount Sinai then. It was just a little smaller. That's that side of the family. Okay. Were there any other Jews in Plymouth? No. I don't think. Just the Fells. Okay. The name Fell. The extended family. It's, you know, Plymouth's near Elkhart Lake. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I didn't expect any, but I wouldn't expect Jews to be there in the first place. No. Our family was also came from but guess a what? small town. I got to confess. Really from where? Uh, they moved into Jackson. Oh, wow. From where? Jackson. Outside. I, that's outside. Yeah. I know sure. Jackson. That's yeah. near Cedarburg. Mm -hmm. All right. Something else I remember. Um, they moved to Milwaukee, and then my father sold Metropolitan Life Insurance. Uh -huh. Am I right? All right. And then. I got married. You want me? Can I go on my By all means. Then I got married in 1941. Okay. Judy wasn't born. No. I hope not. <laughs> Judy's young. <laughs> and then the war came along. My husband had to go in service. But before that, I wrote something else. When I was single, I went to Sherwood High School, and I wasted two years at Milwaukee State Teachers, and I didn't want to be a teacher. So I went to a place called Miss Brown's Business College. It's, oh my gosh. it's like Prospect okay. Hall okay. for six months. And I got through that because I didn't want to go to college, finish to be a teacher. And I went to work. And I went to work for a firm in Milwaukee. And they're Jewish. Their name is Ettenheim. See? And now it's and called? Now wait. And it was called Empire Federal Savings and Loan. Then it was changed. And now I think it's guaranteed. Could be. But my boss had a son, Milton Ettenheim. Do you, do you know him? You know, oh, so sure, I know. Bubbles, we call I, him. I call him Uncle Milt. <laughs> yeah, we call him Bubbles. I haven't seen him in years. And I worked there, and I got married out of there in 1941. Okay. And then and, tell what happened. Well, then. And then Daddy went to the service. Then Daddy went in the Army, mm -hmm. and I came home to live. And he actually, there weren't a lot of Jewish guys in the Army at that point. And he was a no. sergeant. He was the driver for some of the higher personnel. Was he drafted or did he enlist? Drafted. Okay. And I had a son in Appleton. So that son came to Milwaukee with me in 1943. And I was here for two years. And I was financially strapped. He was a sergeant, no money. I went to work. So I worked. Is this all right? No, everything's all right. I went to work and I worked for um, Kerman's part-time. I worked for Dr. Fox, and I worked for my brother-in-law, Dr. Levine. Dr. Fox. You and I worked for Dr. Fox, right. too. All right. Okay. And I told you I graduated Shore, that you know. Okay. Now, we had a temple affiliation then, and it was Temple Emmanuel. Okay. All right. Talk about the rabbi. Rabbi Barron. Rabbi Barron and Rabbi Hirschberg. In fact, when I got married, I had the two of them. Okay. I got married here at the Surf on Prospect Avenue. Then in Appleton, we had a temple, and I lived in Appleton from 1944 to 1984. And the temple there was conservative. That's what you want to know. What, do you know the name of it? Moses Montefiore. Okay. It wasn't really conservative. Well, it the women and men sat separately, Judy. Right. right. So it was considered orthodox. But what happens in a small town when there's very few families, but they, there's always the Jewish tension as to how traditional the synagogue is. But they had a shul, too, there. They did have another temple. It was real orthodox. 
So then I came here in 84. What brought you here? Um, my husband died. I'm sorry. All right. He died in 83. And I, I'm going to tell you what businesses I was in. You want to know <laughs> all those years? 40 years. We opened up the first liquor store in 1946, in April, Appleton. in Appleton. Okay. What was the name of the store? Stop and Shop. It was, it's one of the most fabulous stores now in the state. Can I just, can I just add a little bit that we missed? Um, Daddy went in the service, and um, he was overseas, and his family was in Milwaukee. And um, he was part of the troops that freed Buchenwald. And he brought us home pictures, and I can remember as a child looking at these small little pictures. That was when um, no one discussed the Holocaust, and especially not children. So that was something that left, you know, when your mom was talking before, um, that was something that left a mark on me because my father always felt very strongly that even though he lived in a community that there were not very many Jews, it was very important to him that someday his children would grow up and carry on the tradition. And part of that came from sitting at the kitchen table and he telling stories about being in Paris and having anti-Semitic incidents yeah, right. in the army and um, being there and watching uh, and telling us stories about the gallows at Buchenwald and how devastated he was we, being We Jewish. had the pictures. Are there any of those stories that particularly stand out in your mind? That they stand out because my father was such a um, very low-key, quiet, um, dignified man, a lot of humility. Um, later on when he was more prosperous, you would never know he was the owner. He was always the one who pitched in and um, treated everybody equally. And I think he was a model Jew in, um, in that aspect of his life. So Our, that was important. So then we opened up in 1946, this fabulous store. It's still there okay. at Liquor. And when we opened in 46, there was no liquor. The war had just finished. But with connections in Milwaukee, Sal Abrams, Levitas, those are all names from years ago. We were able to open up with a little. And we got very Metropolitan big. Metropolitan Liquor. What? Right? Metropolitan Liquor. Yeah, Metropolitan Liquor, yeah. Okay. It was Levitas at that time. And then we opened a store in Oshkosh. All right. And then. You had a Jewish partner there. And we had a Jewish partner. His wife just died. Their name was Nemshov. Okay. And we had a store on the main street and one on 41. Do you know Oshkosh at all? All right. Not really. all right. Okay, ready? So in 1962, we were very successful in the liquor business, two stores. A man came in to us, can I tell? A man came in and said, I have a bowling alley and I want to sell it. A six lane house with pin, no pin, set, pin setters, mm -hmm. no machines. Right. Oh, Dave, I said, Dave, we're too busy. He said, Miriam, we can't handle this. He says, oh, take it off me. Give me a house and trade. We traded a house for a six-lane house, six-lane with pinboard. And the business got great, and it was in a little town called Kimberly, right out of Appleton. That's a little city. And Dave, in 1962, he saw that business so fabulous, I'm going to start build bowling alleys. So he started to build them. When he died, I had 120 lanes and four houses. Wow. But I sold them all. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And we had a 48-lane house in Appleton. We had one in Menasha, one in Nina, and the little one in Kimberly. Then I moved here, got rid of them all. It took 10 years to get rid of them. Do you, did you still, when did you have, until when did you have the liquor stores? The liquor store I had till 1976. And somebody bought it in 76. And it was unsuccessful from 74 to 76. In 76, I went up to another liquor store, and he bought it. And he still owns that set, Big Stop, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Right on College Avenue, Big Stop. Well, we were in the bowling business. I moved here. Dave died, 1983. And I came here, and my Judy and Mike were here. Mm -hmm. Judy has a wonderful husband. You know him. <laughs> and um, we started selling these bowling alleys. And we'd sell them. We'd get them back. How's that like this? <laughs> they, they weren't successful. Well, finally, they're all gone. Okay, enough and, business. Though. Enough. Then I moved here, okay? And then I joined Congregation Sinai. That's okay. what you want to know. Because mm -hmm. Judy and Mike belong to Sinai. Okay. And uh, what else? Did you go to, when you joined the synagogue, I, how do I phrase this? 
Besides your family belonging to the synagogue, what? Why did you join the synagogue? For what reason? For the I community? never had time in Appleton for forty years. I never went to temple except holidays. You know, mm -hmm. and she was so active here, not me. Mm -hmm. So did you become more active after you came no, into Milwaukee? I'm just a name only. I, I don't. I'm not active. Okay. Okay. And uh, um, that's about it. Well, I'm sure there's a lot. And more. Uh, my son is in California, and Judy's here, and Judy has three beautiful daughters. And he has four children out there. And what else? Do you want to talk a little bit? Do you want to go back a little bit and talk about um, growing up on Sixth and Walnut? Oh, yeah. And, and I was born. Is that, I was is born. that okay to go back to mm -hmm. that? I think no, that was of it's um, really quite interesting. I was born. in those days, it was a totally Jewish neighborhood. Was, and your, was your family was traditional? You said, you said you know, the synagogue in Appleton was, that was, so you, were, you grew up reform. At Emmanuel. Yeah, okay. Emmanuel yeah, was yeah, before. I was okay. confirmed. Oh, From incidentally, um, I was born at 588 6th Street. Okay. It's 6th and Walnut. And I remember we rented from Gorenstein's. Is that all right to get some? Oh, no, yeah. the neighborhood. It's all right. really quite interesting. And I used to play with a little girl by the name of Rosie Shapiro. And remember, Uncle Max, the doctor, was living in our house that time. So he was trying to study, and I was getting croup and bothering him. <laughs> and I grew up there, and then we moved to 990 40th Street. That's 40th and Locust. And you went to junior high, Peckham, junior Peckham high School? Peckham Junior High School. Okay. And then I went one month to Washington, and then we moved to Shorewood. And that's when I went to Shorewood High School. You wanted to be near Joe Plotkins, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> we ate at Plotkins. And I had so many friends, and a few of them are alive yet. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. And now I'm here. Right. 40 years in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm sure there's some of this that you'd like to fill in that you can, that you can think of. Well, I think it's always so interesting to hear about the neighborhood and growing up, how everybody was Jewish and all the families were together. And now, you know, that, that hasn't happened in Milwaukee because as we've gotten older, so many of uh, the kids have moved away and left the, uh, left the moms and dads here and the grandparents and whatever. But in those days, everybody lived now, in the same neighborhood. Sure. Now, this I brought you. This is Stop and Shop. This was in in the Sports Illustrated. Uh, but we're, back. we're looking for history. Not yeah, well, this is history. Can I keep okay. this? No, make oh. a copy. <laughs> make a copy. All right, I'll have my mom make a copy. Okay. Now that, that's it. Right. And see, it's there. And tell us about the Packers. We were all Packer crazy. Sure. <laughs> we still who, are. Who was even last after night? After last still, night. Yeah, I'm still Packer fans. <laughs> what was, you know, the, it is interesting hearing about the neighborhoods and they're very tight knit and in close Jewish communities. What was the anti-Semitism like? In Appleton? Uh, in Appleton and in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Appleton, Milwaukee, I don't know a thing. I was no. a little girl. Okay. But I knew a few occasions in Appleton where we had problems. Such as? Well, Well, from a business standpoint, I can tell you that my father was one of the first merchants in a small town that wanted to stay open on Sunday. Okay. And remember, St. Mary's Church yeah. printed something in their program that they shouldn't uh, patronize the store um, because of a Jewish... Uh, owner was trying to stay open on Sunday and it was their Sabbath. Sure. So that was hard. We it was hard on uh, Christmas, I can tell you, we was day and extremely night. difficult being Jewish. Um, I have very significant, difficult memories of that. Um, my father, God bless him, would never allow me to have a tree. And I was this little girl who only wanted a Christmas tree and that was so important. All my friends did. I had no Jewish friends. And I wouldn't bring anybody home in December to my house because they always, where's your tree? We were What's working. the matter? Where's your tree? Sure. So um, that made it very difficult. There were, um, I was the first Jewish cheerleader in our high school. That's right. I was my high brother at Appleton High School. There was only one high we school. We only had 100 people on that community temp that temple. Right. Okay. Um, 100 people. Can you imagine? Not famous. No, so no, it's, it's really. A few um, things. In my graduating class at Appleton High School, there were over 800 kids, and there were three Jews. Okay. And she never was bas mitzvah there. We never had that. I she, was never bat mitzvah because it was uh, an Orthodox synagogue, and the right. girls didn't do that. So at 45 years of age, I became a bat mitzvah, which was very satisfying to me and a most wonderful experience. I have a congregation, so I'm not. 
I gotta tell a funny story. I gotta tell you this. My husband had a lawyer in Appleton who he loved. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Joe McCarthy. The Joe McCarthy? The Joe McCarthy. He's from Appleton. Yeah. Well, whenever he'd come in town, he'd buy a case of vodka from us. Then he retired and he moved to Appleton. He was our best customer. He drank a case of vodka a day. Every you know that's what he died of. Yeah, every, I, just, I, I knew that. I knew him real well. Right. I went to the we I went to the funeral at St. St. Mary's, and Shine and Cone were there, <laughs> and Dave loved him. So we could never put a sign in our window that we were Republican. He didn't we, love him. It was his customer. Yeah, but he but he knew him. He was his lawyer. He had a problem, and guess what? We had a, we had Republican and Democrat in all the stores. Never nobody knew what we were, you know. Sure. But anyhow, Joe, Joe died in Appleton. I knew his wife. And I remember as a little girl going to the funeral. So see? I remember the caissons rolling see? down the street. See, look. You know how you can remember looking at Kennedy's funeral with the caissons rolling? Mm -hmm. That's how I remember standing in the street and watching. But we worked day and night. Oh, the, these stores were fabulous. Back to business. <laughs> a lot of business. So <laughs> what? Now what? Now what's what, what did I write besides this? I told you, sure. What state teachers, Browns? Well, actually, I, I want to actually tie back to the anti-Semitism for a minute. You said that your dad had experienced anti-Semitism in the army. Mm -hmm. Was that from our yeah. army, or is that just being no, overseas? No, from our army, I think. In, do, in what manner? Um, well, my father was really not somebody who dwelled on that. He preferred to move ahead, but he always wanted his children to know who they were and to remember that. And um, he was also interested in carving out a living because in Sheboygan his family was so poor that that was most important to him, which was just an immigrant's dream to have your children do better than you, to go to school, to succeed, um, to have enough money for your family. And that was uh, that was very typical, I think, to of many of the families in Sheboygan who were in a show who really never had enough money. To show you what a worker he was, he built all these and I worked right with him, bowling alleys, liquor stores, and everything. He went in for heart surgery in 1976. Mm -hmm. And he went into a, he was very sick, didn't do the heart surgery there, he had it here at Sinai. And he was so sick, he went into a coma for 20 days. He came out of it, a cousin of ours, a doctor walked in, he said, when's the surgery? After that surgery, and being in a coma, he built more bowling alleys. He added on, he was a worker. He added on more bowling alleys to the originals. Finally, in 1983, he died. It caught up with him. And he died in 71. He was very young. And he used to, he was from Sheboygan? Mm -hmm. oh, he was right. born in 1916, 1911, and he died in 83, so he'd be 72. Oh, it was right. He died on January 3rd. His birthday was January Yeah. 5th. His birthday was the 5th. He died the 3rd. Right. But we had a few uh, th episodes in Appleton that Judy didn't know. We'd get a customer, and they'd use a terrible expression. If we didn't have the right price, they said, we're going to J-E-W down. Mm -hmm. I walked away from it. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I heard that just the other day, actually. Am I right? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's still, it's still yeah. there. But uh, see, there weren't any Jewish, not many Jewish people. Sure. What else did I write? So when did you move to Milwaukee? You so grew up in Appleton. I did. When I grew up in Appleton, and then I um, I went to Madison, and then we got married and started our life here. And I was immediately involved in the Jewish community because I always wanted to. It wasn't very comfortable being Jewish in Appleton. It was very difficult. And when I went to Madison, it was so much fun to be Jewish and participate in the community. And I knew from that point on that that's what it was going to be like for me in Milwaukee and whatever I could do to help and to further our tradition that would just mean everything to me. Um, I had a lot of um, episodes actually growing up. Um, one that, that really rings true to me is in sixth grade when you had to fill out a little registration card and they used to put on every single card, are you baptized? And I put no and the teacher came over said called me up to her and said, um, well of course you're baptized. I said, no I'm not baptized, I'm Jewish. She said, well then you're going to go to hell. And I said, what's hell? <laughs> I didn't even know. But, you know, it was really a point of education in uh, very few Jews. It's very hard to raise children in a community. Um, where there's not there's people not Jewish. like you and you are the different one. That's right. Um, but you rise above it. And that's the important thing. 
And so I, um, my husband went to dental school and um, I worked for the county. And um, after, uh, after our first child was born, we were married eight years, and I started volunteering at the Federation. And it has been one of the most fulfilling and enriching experiences for me. And um, whatever I've given, I've certainly received back multifold. So, um, and that's how I got to know your mother so well. And um, I started out in the Young Women's Division, and uh, I was eventually an She got the Agolnik Award. Right. She and got the Agolnik Award. Right, and the Young Leadership Award. Okay, I was just going to say, why don't you explain what that she, is? Exactly. Okay. Um, Opposite of her mother's life. <laughs> and it was very important to me. And it was also very fulfilling to work within the synagogue. And as I said, I became a bat mitzvah um, when my first daughter was learning Hebrew, she was appalled that I didn't know Hebrew. What do you mean you don't know Hebrew? And I couldn't even read an olive. So, mm -hmm. um, so we had a class for three years that we read. And um, with Rabbi Bookman, um, we all um, rose to the occasion and read Torah for our bat mitzvah. And um, that was something that was very new at that time, because that was quite a while ago now. So, And then um, I went on my first trip to Israel with the Federation. And I think I've been there uh, seven, eight, nine times after. Um, along with that, I worked for um, the Jewish Community Center, so I followed through with that, where I did the adult programming. And then after that, I worked for Jewish Family Services doing geriatric uh, care. So, so I've um, tried to follow through with that in my life, and I'm very fortunate because my children have found it most important, too, and that's the best. That is important. Yeah. So you've been involved with uh, constituent agencies as well. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's wonderful. Exactly. So, uh, there's a question you're asking on the yellow sheet. Mm -hmm. Tell us your involvement in programs of the Jewish community. My children belong to BBYO. You did, Judy. Right. Right, am I right? Fox River Valley Council. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and wait, what's something else there was? Uh, well, we went to, I was confirmed. Oh, yeah, not, at, no, Hadassah. I belong to Hadassah. The, uh, Jew, what's that other one? Hadassah Jewish. What are you in Milwaukee? Yeah. Well, we like to buy life yeah, memberships. Life membership we buy. Yeah. I've encouraged my mother when she moved here to participate in the community and recognize how fortunate we are. Right? Yeah, right. Do you want to talk about that? Well. Because I knew you all the time. <laughs> She's a. <laughs> she should solicit. <laughs> um, we, we, should I tell what we gave? No. 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 What do you want me to tell? No, you can tell how you feel, how important I oh, feel it is, and then I the try temple, to encourage that with my mother. The temple. That's where you found. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me why. And Jewish. What is it about the temple that makes you, oh, I mean, you've got this big smile Because I never had a chance all those years, and now, um, now I support do. the temple. And she still tries to support the synagogue in Appleton also. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm still supporting them, because mm -hmm. we have 75 families now, and they can't, they got a canter now. They don't have a rabbi. That's nice. That's and nice. Um, I also support the Jewish National Fund. Right. Uh, what else? Oh, Jewish Family Service, big. Um, JCC. I love it. Wonderful. But she should solicit. <laughs> now, so have you been over to Israel? You said you support the JNF. Oh, have you been I over to Israel? Israel once. I went to Israel once. Okay, uh, when was once. that? Once. In 1987. I went to a Bar Mitzvah and Bas Mitzvah together. Was it a family a, or a family a, No, friend? a friend of mine's daughter, mm -hmm. granddaughter. And I went to Israel. It's the only time I saw it. Oh, and it was a joint Bas Mitzvah with, they were from Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, the three of them. And I saw Israel. That's wonderful. How long were you there? Um, Ten days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a proud grandma, of course. <laughs> So you were there for 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Yeah, Any baby ten. pictures? Yeah, Come on. No, no, no. We just had our first daughter married. We just had the first daughter. You'll look at yeah. And yeah. I remember Kathy Bernstein 20 Thank years you. ago when Judy started, when I first came. Oh, when I first moved here, another friend of mine said, let's, let's help out for charity, Marion. Okay. And we worked for Sue. Oh, Sue Kohlenberg. Right? Do you know that name? Mm -hmm. And we stuffed envelopes. I met Kathy Bernstein. And then Kathy Bernstein was my roommate once on the trip to Israel. Oh, really? Oh, we had such a good time. And then, <laughs> guess what? I want to ask you something else. Since Sue Kohlenberg left here, mm -hmm. and she went to work for 
uh, the Hungry Task Force. Mm -hmm. So we volunteered there. We worked a couple months there over on Humboldt. They were in Humboldt then. Now they're out near the Mount Spain, Sinai, yeah. near Spring yeah. Hill, aren't yeah. they? I think, yeah, yeah. near the, yeah, Spring Hill. But the Sue Kohlenberg left here and we went there. Went over there. So you but do otherwise, I haven't done I've been trying to sell these bones. <laughs> and here she is. I was telling me that I volunteered too much. Oh, well, it sounds geez. like you've, you've oh, spent a lot of time. No, no. I, but I was an actor for the past 15 years. This one. Your mother taught her to be a fundraiser, <laughs> right? Well, hopefully, it's, it's what we it's need. Good. That's oh, it's a good thing. Exactly. So, what are you most proud of? I'm proud of those three grandchildren here. The ones in California, I don't see. These are three wonderful girls. One is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. She just was married. Yeah. One went to. Br I got a break, and she married a young man from New York who's with the Deutsche Bank, he's with derivatives. They live in New York, and she practices law. Then the middle one graduated Brown University, and now she's on the staff at Brown University, single gal, okay? And then I got a little one. She's 21, and she's graduating Michigan, and she wants to be a stockbroker. Okay. And then a wonderful husband here. The children in California I don't see because I'm not able to travel anymore. Mm -hmm. But they have four out there and grandchildren. Wonderful. And that's it. I'm so happy to be in Milwaukee. I couldn't live in Appleton. Sure. Sure. Well, there's a lot of what your, else? I your mean, family around here. Yeah. Family is so important. And you have a brother in Chicago. I do. I do. <laughs> Let me add, um, this. I want to pose this question to both of you. All right. Um, because you've lived outside of Milwaukee, you've come into Milwaukee and very involved in Milwaukee. How do you see the present and the future of the Milwaukee Jewish community? What, what, do, you, what do you say it holds? Yes, Kurt. Well, I want to ask you as well. Okay, you can think about that. I love it. You okay. grew up here. I grew up here. This is my roots. Okay. And that's why I want to support the temples of art. I think this Jewish community is wonderful. So you think we're on the right track? Oh, you're on the right the track. Jewish this community? building, everything about it. And now with the Jewish JCC remodeling out there, they're opening up that road, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Incidentally, did you see that road, the intersection? Yeah, yeah. She's I've been trying to want, figure Tell out where they're putting the road Tell her what I'm talking about. On Port Road, they're making, they're plowing through to make an entrance yeah. for the back door of JCC. I'm trying to figure so out I'm thrilled to be. Well, the parking, well, everything, um, you know, the, the JCC has tried so hard to be a good neighbor, and unfortunately the neighbors have not felt that way, which is very upsetting, um, because it's a wonderful community center, and they're always inviting the community in in so many different ways. Not only our Jewish community, but they've reached out to the village of Whitefish Bay. Um, so what they are trying to do, they're trying to put all the traffic in the back, behind the center. The landscaping is beautiful. You know, we bought an older building um, that was university school and needed so much work. And they have landscaped it to be um, quite beautiful and um, certainly much nicer than any newer housing project would ever look on that block. Um, and so they have tried to um, appeal to the village in that they will move all the parking and all the traffic behind. And you'll just be looking at the front of the building. Um, and now what they've done to try and appease the village, they're building a road that will come from Port Road so not everything will be unkempt. And that's okay. basically what they're trying to do. Okay. So I was very, um, very proud to look at the center. It was uh, very, um, what did very you do special. That? What did you do? I did the yeah. adult program. So I did the day trips, um, trips in the city, trips out of the city, the computer program, the bridge program. Um, we did a, com oh, program. we donated the computer center. Yeah, we forgot exactly. that. And it, you know what, it ties together our community and uh, it makes it what it is today. So let me pose the same question to you. How do you see the present and the future of the Milwaukee Jewish community? Um, because you've got a great perspective. I'm thinking that the center is going to draw us all together. Um, I think the model of what it was on Prospect and what it is continue to be on Santa Monica. Um, for all my friends that grew up here, I always talk about the weekends at the Jewish Center going swimming there, going mm -hmm. to a bar about mitzvah sure. there, going to a party there. When our kids were little, um, you know, that was where I took them swimming, where they learned to swim. That's where we, I learned to uh, swim. Absolutely. Um, with Lenny, you know, mm -hmm. Jim. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And that's continued at Rainbow Day Camp. You know, my kids all went to Rainbow Day Camp. I feel that for a small community, we work so hard to bring in all the constituent agencies and make them part of us. And I 
only would like to see everybody know how fortunate we are and for everybody to dig in and feel part of this community. Um, I think the day school has been just a wonderful addition. Um, my first cousin was uh, principal, so we, uh, we've always felt very strongly about Jewish education also. Considering that this tape is for posterity in many years down the road, uh -oh, people are going to be Mom. they're going to be <laughs> looking at this. Are there any is there anything you'd like to say or any predictions you'd like to make to 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 whomever is looking at this in the future? I mean, this is your opportunity to speak to somebody, however many years down the road, who is going to be you know, looking at um, this. Every time I sit in the in the executive room where we have meetings at the uh, federation. Remember what it says on the wall, and I think of that always. So do I plan for those who shall follow, and that's how uh, that's how I wish us all to be, and to feel good about it. You know, my mom makes fun of me because I've been so active, but the other side of it is, I would love for everybody to feel good about it, and as you said, for posterity and for our traditions to carry on. So, is that tradition being carried on in your in your children? You oh, think? I think so. I hope so. Oh. Um, Jessica worked. Uh, um, uh, Jory worked at, at, at Interlochen. Yes, yes. Jessica, Jory worked at Interlochen for yeah. years. And, um, and now Jamie married somebody who's modern orthodox, mm -hmm. and, um, and they're finding their path in New York. They joined the conservative shul, and, uh, and they're starting to participate in the community. She already went to the uh, Federation Lawyers Division. Okay. <laughs> was the youngest one there, which was uh, quite gratifying. And um, even my middle one that... Um, you know, when it comes to holidays, the first holiday she went to Hillel, and the second holiday she joined her sister in New York so that they could go to services together. And that's the part that makes all the moms and dads proud. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And the grandmas, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking here. You asked me here, what was the happiest moment of your life? What do you think? When I got married, November 18, 1941. And the saddest, it says, when my husband died, January 5th, 1983. Now, I'm looking for other things that here we wrote. Well, I've got a question for you, actually, and this, this ties in what we're doing here today with the Oral History Project. And also, I mean, you, you said earlier that you worked and you worked and you didn't have time for, for no. synagogues. Never and fed her, never. No, nothing. She nothing. raised by a pack of wolves. And, yeah. You know, um, on the other hand, your your involvement, you've become involved since you've come to Milwaukee and um, you helped sponsor this oral history project. So if given that, where did you learn your sense of tzedakah? From her. Okay. Guess what? I, I, but where, I, did, where did she learn it? I don't know. I think from Kathy Bernstein and Abby Gar Garfinkel. Do you want to hear something? Sure. We, we never had time to, to live. We day and night, these businesses were seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how she grew up to be such a. <laughs> I'm going to brag. <laughs> She's, a, <laughs> but the don giving the donations. Oh, another thing we give every year. This is my thing. In honor of Dave's memory, we give the Jewish War Veterans a scholarship. Right? right we forgot because that. Because he was a Jewish War. Veteran. He was a Jewish War Veteran. So I've done it for 20 years. What does the scholarship uh, cover? Judy knows. Every year they pick a student to give the 500 or 1,000 to him. The, um, for kids graduating high school towards college, okay. Jewish war veterans, um, it's a, it's which is now quite an the Guten group Post. of uh, ladies, and we hope it continues. But um, they pass out scholarships to Jewish kids um, to use them for school. The Guten Post. Okay. So I'm actually going to go back because your mom laid this on you. Uh -huh. um, and I'm going to ask you, where did your sense of tzedakah, and where did your mom's sense of tzedakah come from? Because uh, you're great supporters of the community, you're greatly great. involved, and so it had to come from somewhere, it didn't just... Not for me, No, because I never had time. Time came a lot from my father's uh, Hamish atmosphere that he tried, even though he wasn't home, it was so important to him, um, and I felt a lot of that as I was growing up, I really did, mm -hmm. even though he, you know, I'll tell you, one day we were at... Um, a Jewish awareness meeting, we were talking about Jewish memories. And what was the most significant Jewish memory you remember as a child? And what I remember is I really never cared for it that my father sat, sat in front of the synagogue because he was very important. I was daddy's girl, I was the only daughter.
But what I remember is running down the aisle, swooshing past all the men in the row who were obviously very upset, and wrapping myself in my father's towels. And that's how I used to sit. And I can remember feeling such warmth and such comfort. And that's a wonderful Jewish memory. And I have already talked to my married daughter about Jewish memories mm -hmm. and how important they are. And I feel very strongly about that. And I hope that my children have a lot of Jewish memories to share and carry that on. So it's just the same way your mom stuff. To show you how poor we were in Appleton all these years working, do you mind if I tell you this? Please We do. were so poor. When we go to the temple, we park the car far away because it wasn't a car, it was a truck. We didn't know that. We didn't own cars. Mm -hmm. And we used to park it far away. Now everybody re rides trucks and vans. Sure. But we'd park it far away. It's a red truck. Point. That's and, very good. and it was marked stop and shop all over. We'd hide it on Bateman and Atlantic. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Am I can I tell you all this yeah. stuff? Oh god. That's, I'll these tell you. are the stories that we want to preserve. Because it's that's that's what's important. And now actually this is sort of interesting. You can tell them what we're doing, what Nancy Gorins and I have been talking oh, about. Oh yeah. What we've been doing. We're doing a family tree. We're doing a family tree, and we're trying to uh, trace our family back many generations. And it's a Fox family, Fell family, Goldberg. They go way back. We can't give too many stories out because my mom and my cousin Seema and my cousin Jay, and my cousin Mitzi. Do you know who they are? Everybody mm -hmm. wants to talk at one time. <laughs> Mit Mitzi Silbar, uh, Jay Larky, okay. and the Gorin's so girls. You know who they are. Well, I know who Jay Larky is. Um, and you know the three Gorin's girls. You know Nancy, Nancy, Nancy Edelman, yes. Julie Winston, and Linda Le Linda Levy. The names are all very okay. similar. Yeah, but I think so. We've been trying to uh, lay out a family tree. When did you start? This we have so we have it all on the floor. Oh, okay. <laughs> we got more relatives, but um, well, it was once a very large family. I, I, you ask how Judy got to be a worker. Really, truthfully, I think it was Kathy Bernstein and uh, Evie Garfinkel. Were they your mentors? Yeah, but but they were stand out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you had the world you, before. You you were a little boy. Oh, well, then probably <laughs> twenty years ago. I was, I, was a little, I was a little kid. You know, Nathan was in the drink when I used to have uh, house kids from Orihuela, oh, and really? that's how I first met Nathan. Oh, okay. We, um, I mean, Israel has just been a big part of my life. After my first trip to See? Israel, I think my heart just opened up to um, Judaism and to the country, and I've really been very active in a lot of Israel things. We've been um, very fortunate. We've been friends with every Shaliyah. The Shalkeen program has been uh, most important to us, our family. We've housed kids um, every year. We sponsor the Oh, that's Shalkeen. right. Tell them. We, we sponsor, sponsor every year $1,000. The, the Israel Scouts. Scouts. Mm -hmm. And we always have them stay with us. Kick out it's been great for my kids. We've had uh, kids stay from all sorts of different programs. We've also had adults stay, um, speakers, um, whatever. Oh, we I forgot about them, that. And it's only been wonderful for us and wonderful for my kids and good memories for them in knowing how important it is to. They stay at your house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and that's all on a regular, regular yeah, basis. Regular they are basis. wonderful, People these scouts. Have you ever seen them? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, again, noting that this is for posterity and, and you know, I'm assuming and hopefully things will be different in the future. Just give me your thoughts as such an ardent supporter of Israel or a love, have a love of Israel. Your thoughts about what's happening right now. I think uh, it's another journey, another battle. Um, you know what, it, it's a very difficult time for Israel. I am most concerned uh, right now what's happening in the news is that Sharon, I just want to say our week, Sharon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sharon is um, considering pulling out of Gaza, leaving the settlements, um, encouraging uh, the Israelis who have felt very strongly about the West Bank and Gaza, um, encouraging many of the settlements to move within the borders of Israel. And uh, everyone is concerned about civil war, about religious issues. Um, and we're all hopeful that once again, we will all rally together. Um, I've attended um, many education sessions about the, the security barrier, and uh, I'm a proponent that the security barrier should stay. Um, it's nothing that we want, but it's certainly something that protects Israel. And, uh, and I'm concerned we have very good friends who live in Ranana, and I'm concerned about them all the time. They've had three sons who have fought in uh, the armies. And, um, 
and we'll just hope for brighter days and days of peace. And I think that's what we all want. I thought of something. That's my political message. <laughs> there were two prominent people who lived in Appleton before my time. One was Harry Houdini and one was Edna Ferber, <laughs> right? Who was the second? Edna one? Ferber. She was a writer. Writer, so big. Do you know that name? Yeah. In fact, uh, but Harry Houdini, his, his, father, his father was a rabbi in Appleton. That I knew. Oh, that, that, that knew. That I knew. They have a Houdini museum there now, but Edna Ferber worked at the Appleton Post Crescent, so there were Jewish people years ago. Okay. Let's see. I think is there, any, my is there anything um, that we didn't touch on that you'd like them to know? Or is there something about yourself that no one knows that you'd... Is there something we don't know about so you? After mother? all these Nothing. years? She's Nothing. 88 years old. She's in great health. She's got oh. a lot of energy. <sighs> I would not have guessed 88, by the way. She's got a lot of energy, and I she's uh, cognitively just great. Well, that's obvious. We play cards on Saturday with a relative of yours. Who's that? Goldine Strauss. Uh -huh. yeah. He's older. She's older. <laughs> you know, we always say, how, also old, sharp how old are you? Goldine, how old are you? She says, I've been lying so long, I don't know. <laughs> so wait, does that sound like her? She's dynamite. But she's, that's funny. she's five years older than I am. But she's dynamite. What else I'm looking? <laughs> I think we did well. What do you think? I think you did very well. Told enough stories? Do you have any good stories to tell? No, no, guess what? I did, I did, was confirmed, Emmanuel. I told you that, uh -huh. didn't I? Right. Yeah. Is there something that no one knows? No. <laughs> it's the same question. Israel? I think I got it all. BBYOGFS. Yeah. Very fortunate. Wonderful. Good. Well, we appreciate you doing the interview. Now, and she's got a support. husband, a wonderful husband. I really got a wonderful son-in-law. Well, you're lucky. You don't know him. You're He's lucky. the best. The best. That's what happens when you live with four women. <laughs> but that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, can I show you the pictures? Sure. <laughs> that's a great ending. <laughs>